going on guys have you missed me <laughs> so i'm going to tell you guys this story of um this post pretty much story what happened to a simp now i know i ended my life yes or two days ago um, i was tired i was out of it um but i've been busy um you know making some moves trying to learn how to protect myself etc cetera, etc cetera. so i'm on my facebook and i'm like chilling and this chick from youngstown retweeted this uh, praising this woman and I'm like, this is what I'm talking about with simping. This is what I'm talking about the other day with men who think that being nice to a woman is gonna get everything that they want from that woman, which is mostly sexual benefits. I'm gonna show you guys what these women who don't even be attractive be getting out of men now because it's such a desperation to appease to women now that dudes would do anything. So, as this article reads, I'm gonna put it up here. Um, so my kids really wanted to go to the fair. I couldn't afford to take them. So as a mother, I did what I had to do to make my kids happy. Instead of going to get a job or actually, you know, trying to make it work with the kid's dad, um, I'm going to do what I gotta do to afford to take them. That's the mentality of these women that um, you guys be, you know, caping for. But, back to the point of hand. Um, this guy I had been trying to take me out for months, but I'm not attracted to him. Uh, so I gave him some attention, made him feel good. Anyways, invited him to the fair because I knew he would pay. That's what I'm talking about, you dudes. I'd be simple for these women. This is how they think. This is the mentality. They just want to get anything out of you as anything, like or as much as, as they can get out of you as possible, and then they're going to keep it moving, and they're going to go back to that dude that ain't giving them nothing, but he's fun. He's the you know usually the thug, you know, the, um, societal loser, you know. So. Okay, we leave the fair at 9.30 p.m. He asked me to come over to his house after I get my kids to bed. He was wishing, hoping, thank God he saved himself because this is a litter of thought bucket. Um, had he, she said no because he might have ruined his life getting her pregnant. But um, he asked her to come over after um, she got her kids to bed. Um, she went off on the man because he thought spending some money meant I was going to give him some. Obviously, obviously, if you on a first date or bringing your kids and I'm spending my money at the festival with you, um, this is the first date, then yes, you're a thotty, you're easy, you're a simpleton, you're a peon, you're a freaking um, just diabolical woman. So, of course, yes, I think I can like have you the same night. I think you can leave your kids alone so, so I can like, you know, mess with you the same night because you're easy. But the guy don't have no game because he would have known better. He would have known that he needed to offer a babysitter and he needed to offer you a little bit more in regards to cash if you really wanted a loser type of chick like you. But like I said, he dodged the bullet because he didn't have game enough to know what to do to get you. But back to the point, the man started apologizing, saying how he can see a future with her and her kids after literally a few hours with her. like. I'm gonna get to the commentary after. Let me just read what happened, okay? Um, she said, blah, blah, blah. I told the dude, I hope you find your miss right because it ain't me. Then I hung up in his face. He's a whole unattractive simp. Okay, the whole point of me reading that is to say that, dudes, this is how you guys behave um, based on what a lot of you guys were doing in my chat the other day, like defending women who don't even want y'all, would never date y'all, would never even give you the time of day. But because of you guys, you got these women that are bold, they're so cocky and they're so egotistical, thinking that they can treat you any way they want because you're gonna simp out for them no matter what. Like this man literally, you know, can't get women if he's just really focused on, you know, his his, his life and, you know, um, being more attractive to women by being confident in himself. But when you straight go tricking from the get bat, like when you go and taking the care of a man's kids in regards to like a festival or for movies or something, first date, like you're taking care of a man's kids, another man's kid, you're doing too much, dude. Like you obviously should have saw the signs she was using you. You know, she didn't have no intention of doing anything with you because she brought her kids out the first date. Most of the time with these thought pockets, if they really are interested in you, like what you wanted, they would go out on their own so they can make sure to vet you, make sure you're a good man. But if they literally come out with the kids, you don't have a chance. They're usually, literally just using you for a good time because of the fact no woman would get to know a man with their kids on the first date. She's gonna be more focused on her kids. So at this point, you gotta make it clear. Look, I'm trying to get in after. 
I was, you know, I was spending money to show you kids a good time, but I need you to come after. And I showed you the picture of the chick. The chick is freaking not even, I'm sorry, not, not even it. Now, the reason why I say not even it, let me put a picture back up here, because first off, okay, she got the struggle um, t-shirt that, you know, these women of this nature wear. Uh, as soon as she came out the house with this t-shirt on, I would have said no. Then she had the thotty pants on, shorts on, okay, and what I mean by thotty shorts are, her legs are literally not toned, They're, she's obese, literally um, overweight, but she's just in a small form. So her legs are stretching out the jeans, but it makes the jeans look like they're, like she's thick. But she's built like a box, literally her jeans are the only reason why she looks like shapely. But you can tell that she's built like a juice box, but those, those shorts she's wearing is like holding it all together. Then on top of that, the dude did her a favor because if she takes pictures on her own, she's gonna do the, the thought pocket uh, pose, which is this. She's gonna hold her stomach, she's gonna hold her stomach in like that. So that way you can't see that big flab of stomach she got because she got like a bigger stomach than her butt. So he's doing her a favor by squeezing that all in for her. Then the chick got that freaking lace front, or whatever you wanna call it, you know, that sewing weave that he probably paid for. And then she got a demonic smile. Okay, the reason why I say demonic smile is because you can see the struggle in her eyes. You can tell she just smokes black and mild, you know, Newports definitely. Um, she's literally just smoking weed all day. You should have saw by her hands, you know, she got those fake uh, fingernails. And then I'm looking right here, and it's actually crazy because I'm looking right here, and one of the nails are broke. And it's to the point that, and I don't know why Thought Pockets always got the freaking Apple Watch with a freaking Galaxy phone. Like, you can't use an like, Apple Watch with Galaxy phone. But you just want the Apple Watch so that way people don't know you're too broke to buy an iPhone. And what I mean by broke to buy an iPhone is you literally got the Galaxy S24 Ultra, which is the best Galaxy phone, but you got a freaking Apple Watch. It makes no sense. You know, you just got to look at all these signs. Then she got these shoes. The, the, they don't even look like a brand. They look like a freaking, like, this is a disaster. These are the shoes you get for like $10 at like um, Fashion Nova. You know, overall... You know, the chick, I'm only beating her down and bashing her because she did my man dirty, okay? And the man is absolute simp. My cousin, I was showing him the, the man, and the man, he thought that I was a woman. And the man is built like a woman. You know, he dresses like a, 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 a simp. You know, you don't wear for first date. You don't wear, you know, they didn't even khaki pants. Those are like pleather uh, shorts that are like high um, above the knee. Um, too loose, okay, with a t-shirt that looks like wrinkly, you know, and then she put a clown face over his face because she didn't want to like have him out. And then he put on Vans. Dude, you're too old to be wearing Vans, you know, on a first date. You know, I, thought, I know he thought he was fresh. Now, ultimately, I know I'm, you know, I'm judging. Um, I used to be this guy before I, I learned life doesn't work the way that I, um, you know, I was moving. So I would never be simped out. I would never let a woman you know, take advantage of me, take my manhood, because that's literally what's happening right now. Um, this man is having his manhood taken from this woman. This woman is literally diabolical. She's literally um, preying on his kindness. Now, I hope that he um, sees the light and understand the wrong in his ways and he overcomes this because, you know, no man deserves this. No man deserves to be, you know, uh, preyed upon, um, used, uh, battered, literally. Um, but as I said yesterday, or a couple days ago, uh, you guys got to stop caping for these women that don't even want y'all. I know it feels good. It makes y'all think you have a chance, but you don't have a chance. And then on top of that, um, just a couple of things I can tell y'all. So it's been a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a mess, a little bit. Um, I lit Okay, let me tell you what's been going on. Okay, I told y'all on live a little bit, but okay, I left on... Okay, actually, I'm going to back it all the way up. Wednesday. I knew on Wednesday that I was going to stay up all day Thursday until my flight on Friday. And I was planning on that because I figured I could sleep the whole, um, all day Friday until um, Sunday. So what happened was I um, left. I left um, Los Angeles. I'm sorry, Las Vegas on Tuesday because I had to drive to get my car out the um, I mean, my motorcycle I had to switch parking spots, okay, for my motorcycle. So then I, I left on um, Tuesday from Las Vegas. I got to um, Los Angeles Wednesday. Then on Wednesday, 
I was running behind and had enough time to move my bike. So I just worked all day and then I um, went to sleep, woke up on Thursday. Thursday, I figured I'll move my bike, but I didn't have enough time. I was running behind because I was trying to work and make enough money to pay everything I need to pay before I left. Because mind you guys, I have a situation now in my mind where I got to make a certain amount of money each day because I don't want to be broke again. So every day, even though I got cash in my account, I want to make sure that I got every single piece of um, money that I um, have as a goal made each day. So I didn't have the time to do the bike switch and all that. So I um, worked, then I went to 24 Hour Fitness, and then I, um, as I told you before, and then I went to the laundromat, and then I headed to the airport. Then when I got to the airport, which was at about um, 1 a.m., because I left, actually, I'm sorry, I got to the airport at like 4.30, 5 o'clock, because I left uh, Los Angeles at like 12, and I stopped to get some Del Taco. So I got to the airport at like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. My flight is at 6, um, 25 departure time. So I get to the I get to the airport and I was so tired. It took me about 45 minutes to pack the clothes in front of the back seat. So I'm, I'm getting the clothes out of the back seat. Everything's going smooth. Then I finally leave the car at like at like what 5:30. So then I'm walking and I realize I got a nice little walk. So I get into the airport finally at like 45 after. I'm sorry, 40 after. And then I ask the lady, which so I get to the airport at 40 after, and then I, um, I'm i chilling. You know, I'm chilling, I'm walking, going to find um, the um, check-in. The lady said it's two two floors up. So I get up there, and they tell me that the ticket I got, I don't need to check in because I don't got loot suitcases. I just got my book bag. So now I wasted that, that freaking time walking up. So now it's 50 after, and I had to walk down two floors, um, to go down the escalator two floors, back to the original point where I came in at. Then... I um, went through the um, TSA, or whatever, and my bag. I had my ice pack for my neck because I'm, you know, I'm still injured. In my suit, in my book bag, so they stopped me, and I had to wait because there's two bags that was getting checked before me. And the, the one for lady was like a mother with milk and whatever, and you know it was um taking for everybody I had to test out the milk or something. But long story short, by the time they got to my bag, it was like six o'clock. So I'm like, okay, I got half, I got 25 minutes. I know they're about to start boarding now, no big deal. So I'm in the right terminal already, but I had to take the, I had to take the, the shuttle or whatever tram to the other side of the terminal, which I did. And I got off of it at like five, at, five after about, and then I got to my, um, my um, gate, whatever, at 10 after. Come to find out there's nobody at the gate. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? Why is it like empty? Um, because it was just this elderly lady, this elderly couple, and it was me, um, just standing there looking clueless. And then I asked the guy, Hey, is the, the gate move or something? Cause I mean, I'm here on time. He said, yeah, it moved over to the other terminal or terminal I came into with the TSA. They moved the gate over there. So I had to now like with 15 minutes to spare, I had to go all the way to the tram to get all the way to the other side where I was already at. And the elderly lady and the man, they're coming with me because I was trying to not leave them behind. And they're, you know, walking like slugs because they're, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're elderly. They're just walking slow. So we get to the other side and it's 20 after. And I told him, okay, the guy I think said eight, gate eight. But the, he did say gate eight, but that was the wrong gate. I ran all the way to the gate so I can tell the people, okay, these elderly people come in, hold, you know, let's wait for them. I get all the way there. Nope. Wrong gate. So I look at the freaking monitor after we're running all the way down the terminal. Um, look at the monitor and it said that it was actually two. So I had to go all the way back down. So I told the elderly, pe elderly people, hey, I'm going to run down and tell them to hold the gate. Um, it looks like the flight now is leaving at 45 after, so we should have time. So I run all the way to two. And I told the people, oh, I'm tired. Um, I got elderly people coming, following me. They're, they're walking kind of slow. They can't run. So, you know, if we're going to wait for them, I don't want to leave them hanging. So... The terminal people say, oh yeah, you got time, it's, it's fine. So I'm like, okay, cool. <sighs> so I go and walk back over to them, like, hey, you don't gotta run, they're gonna hold hold it for you. So now we go and um, they get on, they get to the flight, whatever, we get there on time, um, with no time to spare, literally, we're the last people to get in there. So I get on the flight and I had like comfortable seats because the lady, uh, they put a lady in my seat. It was a woman with a kid 
and I, it ain't about race, but it is a certain particular race of this lady. And I'm like, oh God, like this race of women, usually always something bad happens. Like I always get inconvenienced, okay? And I, I get it, you know, a woman with a kid. But what happened was the guy was pranking me, I'm assuming, because he's like, hey, we gave your seat away and there's a window seat. And I always want a window seat, especially on flight, you know? So I'm like, okay, um, and I'm like, like okay, so what, what do I do? And he's like, okay, you can sit here. So it was already two couples there's already a couple on his seat and it was like they were like one at the window one here and then i would have been in the middle and i'm like right there and he's like like blank stare and i'm like can i at least get the window right there and he's like yeah you can sit here in this row and i'm like okay cool i'm like dude why did you why didn't you say that in the first place i was about to freaking go off because i'm like i ain't about to freaking um sit here and um you know not have the seat that i pay for so then after that I'm in um I'm in the row I get the whole um I get the whole row myself because um this flight was like not packed so the whole row and a row across mine and I'm like cool I can take a nap I can freaking maybe stretch my leg out so I'm chilling so now I get off the flight on time and I'm waiting for my cousin for two hours because he has something I do with the military and then his wife was, was was stuck at the school. So I'm waiting, I'm like patient, no big deal. I'm there for like two hours on the live with you guys for like two and a half hours. So then they finally got there and the chick that I showed y'all, um, you know, I showed y'all because I was making a point, um, her dude pulled up and I made a joke, hey, I thought she was my cousin, blah, blah, blah. He straight ignored me. He was like, just ain't having it. So then my cousin pulled up, I get in the car with him. So now this is where it gets kind of diabolical, okay? So I'm in the car with my cousin, and we went to go get haircuts. But I didn't eat yet, other than that Starbucks sandwich. And I didn't get to eat yet because I was alive. So we go. Get, the barber took two hours to cut his hair, cut my hair in like a half an hour. And he made my scalp dry in the process of it. So then my cousin, after that, we go to get the U-Haul situation figured out because his wife was taking a while, and she didn't realize that, the place was about to close, so we had to like rush to, the, um, you know, to the place so that way I can get the, um, um, so we can get the U-Haul att um, attachment so we can dig up the back the car in the back of the U-Haul. So now we go do that, and um, I'm still I haven't eaten, eaten yet. I haven't had water. I couldn't take my medication because I haven't, you know, really ate. So we go U-Haul place, and then we had to go to the stores right away. So I'm like starving, like okay, we need some food. So then. After um, we get to the storage place, she's like, okay, well, I'm going to grab Wendy's for y'all. Um, so I start helping, but I'm like out of energy because, mind you, I, I've not gone to sleep yet. Remember, I told y'all this whole story. I, I'm up since freaking Wednesday at 7 a.m. I mean, on Thursday at 7 a.m., I'm up the whole time. So it's already now. It's Friday at 7 p.m. I've been up since Thursday at 7 a.m., okay? So it's already like pretty much 36 hours almost, okay? I only got 45 minutes to sleep on the flight. So now... We are um, loading up with stuff. We didn't get that done until like 10 o'clock at night. So we come to his house, which was on base, had to get buzzed in, whatever. So then um, we, after we got here, um, I think we, what did we eat? I think we ate, I forgot what we ate, okay? It was something. Uh, actually, no, we didn't even eat. Yeah, we didn't eat again. Like, we just came to the base. I didn't even get food. Like, I'm starving, okay? And I'm like, dude, like, this, this is unusual. This is unlike you. And he, you know, he's frustrated because of this whole situation going on. He just forgot. So now, in the morning, he says he's going to get breakfast. So I wake up at, like, 10 at 11 o'clock at the sleep hill. I woke up late, and they were already gone. And a lot of stuff happened to where the U-Haul truck died, that they had to get the battery died. So I'm at the house, and it's, like, literally, I'm waiting around for, like, seven hours. And it's, like, 3 o'clock, and he still is not back. Mind you, I have not ate since like really a full meal since like Thursday at 1 a.m. Okay. So I, I hit him up like what's going on. He didn't answer because his phone um, was messing up. So now I'm like starving. So I get this bonus money from Bravada. It was like $50 in like a free play that I was able to turn the $50 in free play into um, um, $200. Then I eventually turned it into, I got like two minutes before this cuts off. So I'm going to get to the point. I turned out free play Saturday from um, 50 to 200 and 200 to a thousand dollars. Okay, and I'm like lit. So I was able to cash out like 350 to pay for um, a couple things and then also um, do DoorDash because that's the reason I was trying to get in touch with him because I need to know um, how much. I mean, can I order DoorDash? So by the time he hit me up, 
like I made that money with um, Bravada. And remember, I'm not putting no money in Bravada of my own because I'm being disciplined. I'm not wasting no money because I've been losing. And I'm not using none of that money that I got to bet. So I'm happy. So now I got a free meal because of the money I made. I could pay for DoorDash. So I spurs a little bit, got Pizza Hut, gave him a nice tip, whatever. So now I eat. So then they finally get back and it's like 7 o'clock. And we're supposed to leave yesterday, but you know, we now it's, it's Sunday and it's like freaking about to be 11 o'clock. We still haven't left because then we're supposed to leave now today at um, at um, 6 a.m. But we are still moving around and it's like about to be 11, 12. But I got to be back to L.A. on um, Tuesday at 1.30 for my chiropractor. And then I got that clinical trial I got to do. So that's my situation right now. It's a mess right now inside out. So I'm trying to figure this all out. I'm trying to get this together because ultimately... Um, there's no other chance. Uh, I mean, there's no hope if I don't get, you know, I gotta get back. And there's no hope other than, um, you know, getting back on time because I'm trying to, you know, rent up as much money as possible, hopefully 15, 16,000. So that way we can move on to the next thing. So that was my situation. That's my situation right now. So I'm trying to, you know, just go with the flow, but it's just so frustrating because this is just so unorganized and I'm trying to help, you know, my cousin helped me out many a times. You remember he helped me out New Year's Eve, he gave me that money that I didn't ask for, he literally forced me to take, but I was happy about that. But yeah, he gave me that money and I was able to take New Year's Eve off. But, you know, this, I, I hope this gets together because, you know, it's like a, a mess. So I'm gonna do another video. I just want to give y'all a little update what's going on. I'm trying to get on in this car so I can do a live. Uh, I'm waiting for him to bring the U-Haul. It's just been a disaster. But with that said, we're gonna um, move on to the next. But yeah, let me know what y'all think about that simp because we're gonna do go into a deeper dive when I do my live about simping. It's not good for you. Like it's literally the worst thing you can do. And um, you know, we're gonna see if there's a better solution to you know simp culture. But like I said, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'm back in here. That's all I got. I'm out. Peace. It's like button, by the way, too. Peace.